Celebrate good time. Come on. Hi there. How are you? How are you keeping this festive season? This is Her Standards with me, Quinton Bori, and we are just getting into the holiday vibe. Now, today we are hanging out with one of Kenya's topmost fashion designers. I'm talking about Olga Nato, CEO and founder of Olga Nato studio she is here and she's going to help us about making decisions on what to wear during this season talk to us at ktn home across all social media platforms are you having a hard time figuring out what to wear to the after parties and the birthday parties and all the parties that are happening during this season fear no more because we have the expert in the house well, hello there. Oh my God. <laughs> See who's here. Look who's sneaking up on me. Oh yeah, hi. How are you? What are you doing in my studio without me? <laughs> Lovely as usual. Thank you. Oh my god, did you make this? Oh yeah, this is one of my holiday collection. Am I getting anything for the holiday? Anything for you. Okay. Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> did you see something you like here? I like the mustard. It is so me. You know, you Definitely. know me. You know me and bright and, colors. And colors, right. Yes. I'm gonna pick one for you and okay. so you try. So as we chat, okay. you you try this on. Okay. Or oh, this looks like this will be your size. This is my size. Yes. Huh? Okay. So let's 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 try this then you can tell me. Okay. Yeah? See Thank you in a you. short while. I'll be back. <laughs> So, here yeah, I am. Oh, wow. How do I look? You look fine. Thank yeah. you. This is so nice. It's so holiday mode. I hope you're ready to step out after this. I feel like a million bucks. <laughs> you are. And we can definitely not waste this. Oh, yeah? Mm. This is so good, Nato. Thank you. All stitched here. All are done here. Wow. Made in Kenya. Made in Kenya. Yes. Amazing. Thank you. I have two questions. Please. Because it is made in Kenya. Yes. <laughs> Uh, people complain that uh, one, clothes made in Kenya are not good quality and I'm here to tell them that this is really nice. I mean, this is something I would buy for, even if it's online. Right. And the people also say that uh, designers or fundis in Kenya are not reliable. Well, that's forgettable and I agree when you say fundis, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but um, should I, which one should I start with? The first or yeah, the second? Yeah, the first one. Let's start with the first one. So, that um, the issue of the fabrics, yeah. I'll say for sure that's one of the biggest challenges that we face as designers in Kenya. Yeah. Getting a proper fabric in Kenya is not easy, but then it also takes a designer with an eye. You have to know what you're looking for, you have to clearly define that when I'm doing this collection, what am I looking for? If it's not in the country, get it out. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then two, um, the issue of uh, food is not being reliable. So I'll get you back to what exactly made me to have people or that I can have under my roof is one. I think our um, or our food is or before people didn't look at this as a profession. So you do it as a part time. If I pay you today, we end up in Roro. <laughs> then oh you are we are having your order so so that's why uh designers step in who are professional mm. so it's so it's it's helps to carve that uh, it's proper yeah in having a function or if you want your outfit done it's proper to use engage a designer engage a designer but will we afford them yes really definitely okay yeah welcome um, to her stand Thank you very much. I've been longing to be with you. Finally, get to set standards for women on how to dress up. Right. Why is it important? <laughs> to set standards? On how to dress up. On yeah. how to dress up. Because mm -hmm. every, the moment you step out, like, I don't know where we were, must have been in the wild, our yeah. discussion, oh, that yeah. make a five or a, a three second introduction. How do you introduce yourself? Mm. First, you can introduce yourself without a word. So that's where we begin. Mm. Like first of all, it's, it's the image you put out there. So it's very important to have your standards. Mm. Um, and, and of course you're going to tell us how to do that at right. some point <laughs> on the show. But right? now, why yeah. did Olga Nato decide to go into fashion design? I mean, there are so, so many, many careers yeah, out right, there, but then yeah. you decided to stick to this. Mm -hmm. 
and not just stick to it, but to be persistent about it because about you keep evolving, yeah. yes, girl. Oh, thank you very much. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take you back. Uh, this is something very personal to me. I say this with a lot of passion because I lost my mom at the age of nine. Hence, um, I wanted to, to live to her dreams, to see her in everything that I had then. So, well, I only have one sister and the rest are boys. And my mom was a fashionista. She left us with tons of clothes. And I mean, being just nine years old, um, I had plenty of clothes here. Yeah? but of a grown-up. So can you imagine what I had to do with my own chair? I had to readjust this. Some I took to the tailor, some I did myself. And so this passion, if you can see, I trace it really uh, way back. And then other than that, I now after uh, growing up, yeah. I wanted to see every little thing I do, um, looking back to when my mom lived as a young girl of my age like in the 70s in the you know 80s how was she so i wanted to see her live through my collection so this got to be very personal to me because i actually did not study fashion i studied something else no education <laughs> yeah and so i found my call back to this Time to time, I stepped out of the country. I think that's when it was very clear to me that I wanted to be um, in fashion. Because then when I stepped out, I was in this country that uh, there was high and low, and, and definitely I wasn't fitting low. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought to myself, what is it that I can do to bring my personality out in a very distinct way and yeah. in a very authentic way yeah. so i started talking to my sister again back at home like hey can i have some pieces now this time made in africa so uh, african fabric so that i could have my own i kind of wanted to brand myself yeah. to you know um as african as I, I am i wanted to have that scene in me in how I dress and, and everything. So I had my sister send some of the outfits to me, which I all got sold to some of my colleagues. Yeah. And I thought there was a gap. There was a gap uh, that there was something I could do in between. And so this also took me back to my love for fashion mm. and everything. So I got back home and said, I wanted to enroll in a fashion school to start this. My family, of course, did not let me. So, <laughs> Why? What was their excuse? So, um, like my brother said, I mean, what's wrong with you? People go to school and then you want to be a tailor? Like a tailor? <laughs> Are you even listening to yourself? So, this was hard. Getting to this space was hard. I had to fight and put um, my voice mm -hmm. very consistent and strong mm -hmm. that this was a, a road I wanted to take. So I talked to my brothers time to time, my dad, no one, no one really understood. They were like, they were thinking, um, maybe I've, I'm looking at some fantasy. Yeah. This is not um, they thought you were, They thought you were downsizing perhaps. Yes, huh? yes, yes, mm. yes. But my thought, after being out of the country, I would say that really exposed my thoughts. Because I thought to myself, there are lots of things that we we just look at them here like they don't have money. Man, yeah. I learned that there are so much money in mm. things that people overlook. Mm. Yeah, so that got me back. Like there is a niche I had to to fill, and then there was a dream from way back from my mom and wanting to see her. Yeah, wow. so this that is so sweet. This. That is so sweet. I'm sure she's very. <laughs> Proud of you from. I hope she is. Yes. Yeah.
So before we talk about your studio, which right. by the way is so beautiful, like I've not walked in a beautiful studio in a long time, right. with very nice uh, furnishing and decor, very nice. You brought up a very important point and something that I, I would really like you to highlight because sure. there is a difference between a designer and a tailor because yeah. people tend to confuse these two ideas or words from time to time. Yeah. What is the difference? So I'll tell you, as yeah. a designer, mm. you need to collaborate with so many people to uh, bring your vision. So uh, the designer is the bearer of the vision. Of the so you have this image in your mind. You have to have some stresses. Okay. These guys are the guys who will help you. Okay. You know, you'll have pattern makers, you'll have uh, tailors, you'll have um, stylists, you'll have oh. different people to realize your your vision. Yeah. So the designer has to bring a vision yes. into light for example yes. if you have an idea of an outfit it's, yeah. it's not just people people tend to confuse you know the designer with the tailor because they have the the end product in mind just the outfit just the outfit but it's more than it's more than that it's more than yeah that. it's yeah. more than that because yeah. you have mentioned you have stylists on standby you have seamstresses yes. you have pattern designers yes. you have photographers exactly wow Stylists. That, yeah Okay, so yeah. is that the reason why you decided to? Sorry, I'm I'm I'm, I'm jumping ahead <laughs> of you. Is this why you, you decided to come up with this studio? Because when I walk in, right, it, gives it is so vibe. different from yeah. say the tailor ring shops that I've visited because exactly. it gives me a totally different vibe. Yeah. Why did you create this studio, and so, why was it yeah. important for you? That's why I put it as a studio uh -huh. where I I would want to not just um, sell clothes. Because then I would find a space somewhere and sell clothes or find a place to have my tailor and, uh, and do everything there. But then I created a studio to, to even have women conversations like this. Yeah, because I deal with a lot of women and every day there are different conversations. I wanted to have a space, a free space that we can sit and have water, drink and talk about um, this, uh, these conversations that are every day um, to have a place where I can have photographers come in, stylists come in, my tailors, I work with pattern makers, I have other young designers, interns, people that I want to be better designers yeah. uh, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I had to create a space for them. This is so nice. Thank you. Now when you think of it now, it's all adding up because right. This is more than a fashion house. Yeah. It carries a bigger vision, mm -hmm. which will tell us badai. Yeah. What you're wearing, is it stitched here? This is part of my holiday collection. This is a simple chiffon fabric. I wish I could stand, but I know I have things <laughs> yeah. I'm wired. You're wired. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. mm. But yes, this is uh, one of our pieces of um, our ready-to-wear mm. and holiday collection. Material locally available? Material locally available. No. Yes. Yes. You have okay. to have an eye of getting okay. things that okay. work. That is so nice. Thank you. Anyway, yes. why am I asking you this? Right. Because over the years, mm -hmm. when we have a dressing contest, say even on social media, we have Kenyans, Tanzanians, yeah. Ugandan, South African. Mm -hmm. What most people always say is that Kenyan women, we don't have a proper sense of fashion. Mm -hmm. Yes, do you agree? Well, I'll say I'll agree and disagree. So mm. um, I happened to be in um, some function about two weeks ago. Yeah. So one was more of Kenyan and then the other was more of West African. Oh my God, people dressed up. I would say, uh, well, Kenyan. How, how did Kenyans do? So, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I think this is positive criticism, this is positive, positive criticism, yeah. yes. But I'll, I'll start with the positive side, yeah. um, that I think an event like that done in 2010 or 2013, the years that I was just getting to be, uh, to be introduced in fashion, yeah. it was way different. You get into a wedding mm. and you find jeans, you find t-shirts, mm. and so I think today people try to, you know, glam up. They'll have a fascinator. Yeah. They'll they'll actually try to dress, even though we are not up to, yeah. yeah? Mm. But I think, with all honesty, that we have, we are getting somewhere. Mm. Yeah. 
and I'm happy that I'm writing that history. I'm mm. part, You're of, part the, of that. Yeah, You're rewriting that. that. Are writing the history that mm. oh, our fashion industry grew during this time. Mm. Yes. Keep going, keep yeah, going. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Then, then I remembered the West African one. Oh, yeah. My God, I was, I was, I was so ashamed. It not like I, I dressed down, but I was like, my God, people don't take things easily. Like it's not a joke mm -hmm. to them. It's not a joke. So it was, I think, a three something. So people were changing in between. They were on another level. No, wait. Like one event, several outfits. Yes. Oh my God! Different, I have yeah. never done that. <laughs> yeah, I think I don't know. We are we are a bit conservative, yeah. uh, as opposed to other people. Uh, but I I still think we are getting there, and I'm I'm proud of our women mm. and even our men today. Mm. Though still in debt, I I can stay with say with a lot of certainty that you will still find most Kenyans wear jeans to a date or t-shirt to a date. I don't think it's right. You had you had that from the <laughs> seamstress herself. She says, please yeah. keep the jeans at home yeah. when you're going out on a date with your significant other or your girls. You need to put a little effort. Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yes, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> now, apart from yeah. the jeans, what are some of the mis jeans, of course? And we also do yeah. we dress down tees and all. Yeah. What are some of those mistakes that women make, especially Kenyan women, that we need mm -hmm. to? we need to fix in order to compete with our Niger sisters, our sisters from Bongo and the Ugandans and the South yeah. Africans and everywhere else, yes. I think um, lots, because I think we are coming from um, a background of people being really uh, conservative. Yeah. Uh, and so people do not look at little things like, you know, let's go out for lunch. They just, I'll just think, oh, it's a queen who is my friend. Let's just go out. I'll put on my my whatever crocs um, yes and and i step out uh shamelessly yeah i think as women we don't you don't have to be on the other side of overly yeah just every other woman it's good to put um every effort to every opportunity you get to you know um to step out to show you the world is your runway so every day just ensure you you dress the part mm -hmm. if it's swimming still dress the part if it's you know showing up for a date just ensure it matches if what if that was the place when you say we are we are stepping out with you and mm -hmm. i for example i'm single yeah who knows the you know it's the first impression that matters and who knows whether that's you're meeting your future boss yeah. you know yeah, yeah so Put your better, best effort, no matter what or where you're going. It is right to do Good so. Good stuff. I think you second-guessed me because the, the next question I was going to ask you is, yeah. again, we've been accused of not dressing appropriately, especially when, um, one, going for weddings, yeah. and two, when going to worship areas, mm. church, I mean, yeah. almost, yeah, because some people... They say it's our soul... Yes, yeah, it's too, but, yeah. they, they, they probably they expose too much. Too much yeah, yeah, so given your your expertise and your knowledge, yeah, what do you think about I that? I think after meeting with a lot of women, some of them are also just lack of, yeah, what to wear or rather mm -hmm. they know how in that, that probably for your body, because there are people who got no idea about their body yeah. types and shapes. And so they do not know what works for them. They just know, oh, I'm a big, a big size. I can't wear something baggy to make me look so big again, which is a misinformed uh, kinda. It, th this would go pretty well with the cut. Yeah. So you have just to wear outfits that got the right cuts that works for your shape. Mm -hmm and also your size as well mm -hmm. yeah thank you someone once said actually that you need to dress how you are how you want to be addressed and that's right yeah so you want to take a short break remember yeah. we are with the seamstress the designer extraordinary the award-winning designer the ceo and founder of olga nato studio in store for you is still her holiday collection you do not want to miss it i am looking at it from here and it looks ah uh, 
amazing. Remember, we are in the festive season where it's all about dressing up, showing up and loving it. Don't step away. We will be right back. Well, we are glad you could join us yet again for the second part of this interesting interview. We are talking about everything fashion and festive season. What are you wearing? What do you intend to wear as you attend the different parties and celebrations that are happening around you? Remember, our host just told us before the break that please put a little effort, make a little effort, ditch the jeans for something that looks a little glamorous and you never know what might happen. So we are joined by the one and only Olga Nato. She's the CEO and founder of Olga Nato Studio. This is an all under one roof uh, fashion design house. You need to walk in and just find something that works for you. Tell us about your fashion challenges. What exactly is happening in your closet? The fashion expert is in the building. Talk to us. We are available at KTN Home across all social media platforms or you can also reach me at Quintambori Facebook on Facebook, Instagram as well as Twitter. Madam, boss, welcome back. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're looking lovely Thank you. as usual. Yeah. So yeah. let's just dive into it because sure. before the short break we were talking about the fashion knows, don'ts and do's especially yeah. For Kenyan women. I think that's yeah. very important and the, some of the points that you highlighted I believe that those who are watching have yeah. actually picked you know yeah. very important. Now I want to know because Olga Nato has been in the fashion industry for how long now? Six years maybe yeah. Six years. Yeah. How have you evolved from time from time to time ever since you made that first outfit what has mm -hmm. happened it, to your brand and are you enjoying the benefits? Wow, well, wow, wow, wow. Let's see. <laughs> so, right, yeah. yes, <laughs> I have so much going on, yeah. But I'll take you back to when I started. So, first, getting into the fashion industry with no mentor, no prior, uh, you know, uh, skills or yeah. of fashion, mm. I made a lot of uh, efforts in doing my own research, in doing YouTube, in keeping up with the trends, in doing so so much yeah. so that I can be where I am today and and even much more because I am not where I want to be yeah. but I can say for sure um, there have been lots of challenges yeah. challenges some of the challenges are getting the little things like zips yeah. zippers that work really yes simple things like that and getting fabrics that work so over the time um, I started with a lot of African fabrics, mm, mm. then I found that to be everywhere, which is still not yeah, bad, yeah. yeah. Then after that, I went into doing gowns and mm. I perfected um, the art of doing my yeah, gowns. Yeah. And I think mm. my gowns are one of the very best because I do very daring gowns, uh, which are very chic and, uh, and, and sexy and uh, shows the shape of African women, mm. which also goes with my tagline, shape, shape of you. Shape of you, you <laughs> yes. tell us more about that. Yes, yeah. yes. so mm. I, I loved doing my gowns, so now what made me Hold change? Up. Hold up, before yeah. you finish up on the gowns, don't be modest. Thank you. Yeah, because <laughs> the gowns actually did very well Thank and you, you were able to showcase not just locally but also... Yeah, both abroad yeah. in Europe, mm -hmm. um, in West Africa, yeah. um, the UK, yeah, and, and different other places, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So then now back to the evolution and mm -hmm. what happened after that so doing my gowns i love gowns i love women in beautiful gowns and so i still think and know that gowns are majorly my strength okay. which i love perfectly doing mm -hmm. so then covid happened yes so covid defined a lot of uh, stuff mm -hmm. for us in 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 the industry mm -hmm. and also showed us 
the weaklings, mm -hmm. the stuff that, you know, um, people could not now meet and people started having trust issues. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm coming to you, you're meeting so many people, mm. how can I mm. trust mm. that uh, probably your place is clean enough? So to me, the, the pandemic um, brought the path of my ready to wear, which I think for some time I was contemplating. I kept thinking, oh, I'll do a ready to wear. Yeah. Oh, I'll do a ready to wear. Uh, the reason why even the ready to wear was very important. I would do gowns, yes, yeah. gowns, yeah. and gowns are good money, yeah. but then they're not every day. You walk into my studio today, you have something ready. So we are having a conversation of a gown, mm -hmm. but you've spotted something that you yeah. like. Uh -huh. Perhaps I have tops that are as low as two five. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are things that you are able to get without a second thought. So COVID taught me that uh, people needed things that are easy to wear, mm. things that are affordable, yeah. like very affordable, uh, because most people are now buying things that are below 10,000, mm -hmm. things that are very practical as well to them. So that made me to realize that, oh, there are no functions, there are no weddings, there are no red carpets. Either way. What are we going to do mm. now? Mm. So then um, I thought to myself, as we stay at home, we still need to look good. Mm. Back to looking good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, there's no excuse. <laughs> COVID or no COVID. <laughs> COVID or no COVID, you still would realize that, hey, I still need to look good. Because yeah. then you'd realize before you have everything for work. Yeah. By the time you're getting home, you're actually just getting into your, probably your PJs. Yeah. After, you know, after work, you have your dinner and then the next day the routine continues yeah. and people neglected the other side of being easy mm. just you know mm. relaxing yeah. and so that's the part uh, the part that i thought you know um we still need to relax like you and i mm -hmm. we still need to think when we're going out on holidays how do we dress do we still pull our suits do we still uh, you know do we just have what kind of fabrics do we need for holidays what kind of cards and so those are some of the highs and uh, highlights to me. Mm -hmm. But then the, the real challenges that I've faced are very uh, simple stuff like mm -hmm. accessories, fashion mm -hmm. accessories mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. and getting reliable fundies. Mm -hmm. And, 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 you know, building relationship with clients, it, that's very important yeah. as well. Yeah. And pushing yourself out there mm -hmm. to, to market, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. You know, I, I attended this event where it was um, an entrepreneurship. That's right. Sort of like a mentorship award. And mm -hmm. there's this speaker who said that for you to make money or for you to be wealthy, you need to have a pet. Uh -huh. And if he's watching, you remember that yeah. a pet is not nyau or dog. Right. <laughs> pet is this acronym for problem. Mm -hmm. You need to identify a problem. Yeah. And then you need to put in the energy. Yeah. And you need to put in the time. The time. Yeah. Well. So I think yeah. what you're doing is we're just capitalizing on the COVID situation, but mm -hmm. you started to see this. You didn't focus on the gloomy side. You, yeah. foc you focused on the silver lining yeah. and see where you are. You know, one thing Nato is um, uh, most women, yes. you know, this is a show for women. For women yeah, yeah, most women, especially the younger, the younger generation. Mm -hmm. What happens is that we have these ideas of businesses that we want to put up. Yeah. But then we keep jumping, you know, yeah. from here losing to the focus, losing yeah. focus, jumping here, moving on to the next. So at the end of the day, we end up spending a lot of money, yeah. but then there's nothing substantive to that show for it, out yeah. of it. Now, all the Nato Fashion House, Shape of You, very nice um, tagline. Right. I mean, you have been there, you have... I've shown consistency. You have been consistent, yeah. you have survived you know uh, epidemics i mean yeah, in, yeah. in the book of history you'll say i survived covid right yeah. what would you tell our young people especially the ones who have an eye mm -hmm. i mean who have interest or who have shown interest in doing businesses especially yeah. in the service industry because now you i believe you have deserve you deserve to give the you have the audacity to give to them give advice <laughs> yes mm. no i have i can say that with a lot of strength yeah. because i have uh, a lot of young people get mm -hmm. to 
to come here and uh, after every three months I have a number of different uh, young designers yeah. that train with me. So what I would say one is uh, how do you get to perfect your art? Learn from the best. Mm -hmm. Go under someone who's been there mm -hmm. and uh, come out even as a better, a better person because I definitely want someone working with me to become better. Mm -hmm than you know than me so i think uh, you you don't have to do it uh, alone or you don't have to start rather start smart mm, start but smart start smart you also don't have to start small start smart by starting smart i mean you have to get down your vision why you started anyway what's your drive what is making you to choose this and not it because this is just any other um, business, yeah. people think that fashion is easy because they see the end product. Mm. They do not know what is what is uh, the behind process. the scenes, the process yeah. of uh, you know getting to where we are now mm. in of looking glam. looking like this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is a mm. lot of work. You have to have um, a team that works. Okay. And and also um, you have to know exactly what is the what is the line you want to take? Uh, what are the fabrics you want to mm -hmm. use? What do you want to be known for? Okay. So when you go through every stage of what you want, you realize that you probably, as a young person, need to, after training, take internship with yeah. other people. Ensure you learn as much and grab as much as you can. Also, do not shy from seeking um, help. Talk to mentors, mm -hmm. talk to people who have been doing it and 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 consistently do even if you are doing your own seek internship elsewhere mm -hmm. to you know to keep learning mm -hmm. and uh, don't close your doors from learning keep knowing what are the trendy stuff and how are they inspiring your work how, what was the history mm -hmm. and yeah and where do you want to be and sometimes it's just not money and sometimes it's also not just clothes it has, it takes more. There's much more. Yes. I agree. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's around the Christmas season. I wanted right. to ask you a question around the Christmas season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, you know, passionately or with a lot of nostalgia, you know, yeah. during our, our, those days when Christmas was Christmas. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we used to dress for Christmas. Yeah. Do you, were you born by then? Come on! <laughs> Do you remember our first conversation with you? Oh, really? Your love for fashion. You are not talking about your love we'll for fashion. We'll get back to that. <laughs> You'll get back to that before we finish. You, love to, you can right. interview the interviewer. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. But do, do you think we have lost that Christmas spirit where, you know, we, 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 we I don't think... Because I remember, we, I even have a picture. I don't know whether yes. I can give it to Grace, of my family dressed up for Christmas. For Christmas. Yes. So I, I might want to say yes and no. Yes and no is because, yes is because uh, I think you've grown now and, and Christmas does not wow you anymore. You probably have better things. You look at it like, oh, it's just a holiday mm -hmm. of this. I can do one, two, three. Yeah. So then I think it's change, maybe priorities or, or something. Yeah. And, and yes, you still can be back at home and see kids very, I mean, you find them quite excited about Christmas. You find them having chapels at home and, and cuckoos. And, yeah. and I mean, I think young ones are still very, but then the grown, they, they think they are better things in life than Christmas. Than Christmas holiday. Yeah. I think we but, should. We should. But holidays mean so much. Holidays mean so much. Yes. And outfit, clothes are also part of it. Oh yes. Let me ask you, Nato. How yeah. many times should we shop as women for ourselves? Forget about the family. For ourselves. Yes. Or are there seasons when we are allowed to, when we can just go in and spoil ourselves? So this is a question that uh, lots of people ask, by the way, <laughs> and I, I can say I was equally. Some time back, I was a victim of that. I mean, go, go into your wardrobe, check on the clothes that you have. Like, how many times, or oh, in a year, how many times have you worn some of the clothes? You find yourself that you wear a particular kind of mm -hmm. clothes mm -hmm. or, or design so many times. 
I can I could at some point even wear one clothes even twice a week oh and also check in the evening when you get back home what kind of fabrics do you like to be in? Okay. yeah mm. so then find what you like in those simple ways and that you don't have to have a, a entire room of closet um, check on quality check on your closet like what is it that brings what kind of cuts and, and fabrics you don't have to have too much you mm -hmm. don't have to shop after every uh, six months or after ev every day mm -hmm. which we are very weak yeah. Uh, to yeah I know so you just what you need to know is your style you need to know your style and and because you can pair something like this I wish we had more time but yeah. I would tell you that you can pair this even in three different ways mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so knowing your style is very important knowing in, your style yeah in, in guidance in how to show as show. well yeah, yeah. That is a. V I know <laughs> women. Find quality in yeah, in what you buy. <laughs> anyway, Nato, I have two more questions <laughs> before you show us your 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 holiday collection. Yes. Which, man, I wish I could try all of them. Mm -hmm. What do you think the fashion industry here in Kenya is missing? Yeah. Yeah. Is there something that it's missing? Because I know we have very vibrant. Looking at what is happening abroad, I'm talking yeah. about the EMT, the Met Gala. My God. Exactly. Do we have anything elaborate back home that unites, you know, the fashionistas and the fashion designers and the, you know, the, the beauty industry uh, in general? What is that one thing that we can do in order to make this industry vibrant and so, to also grab the attention of the world? Yes. I'll, I'll get back and, uh, and to be very, very direct about it. One, as, as a fashion designer yeah. or a young, uh, young and upcoming fashion designer, you need to register and be part of fashion council. Oh. When you have a council, then you know some stuff that uh, guide you, mm -hmm. number one. Then number two, unity. Because oh. I think um, number two is still bordering number one, yeah. the unity, because... Um, we can't have a voice if we are we are, we are divided and scattered divided, all over the place yes, yes. Mm. yeah and and i have seen most people do not pay creatives mm -hmm. you can't put words to them someone will be saying why do i need to pay you ten thousand in this it's just this dress it, so we don't put uh, we don't put uh, value. value in uh, in creatives and i would also say um Someone will pick something very lovely in the internet, a gown that probably Beyonce wore, yeah. and and they want it uh, at uh, uh, maybe five thousand. Yeah. Like I want this, but at five thousand, surely how can we grow <laughs> with that? We have to appreciate uh, creatives and and I mean just uh, get to treat them right mm -hmm. and be honest and uh, be real in our in our growth mm -hmm. as well and also creatives i know we've been accused so many times that sometimes our prices do not mm -hmm. match what we, yes we also need to allow ourselves to grow to put the charge because we put costs that sometimes do not match what we give mm -hmm. and so it it's it spoils for other people that i mean explain to me why you charge me this dress this, this much this much you, you should be able to give the breakdowns that this and this and this and this is what is making me to put this post. Mm. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, this feel wow. unity and, uh, you know, uh, giving much to creatives. Mm. Yeah. All right. So as we wind up, um, right. it's a Christmas season, obviously, yes. right now. Yeah. Everyone is thinking about what they're going to what wear yeah and yeah. of course after the festive season we have we get back to work in january yes. so i am sure at the back of your mind there is this one personality in kenya that you just say please come to nato this nato <laughs> olga nato studio we sort you out we dress right, you up yeah. yeah who is that person i won't say one person <laughs> my god if you have you are a politician here, <laughs> no, no, no. yeah you, you don't know what you're missing Okay. You do not know what you're missing. This okay. is a place for women. 
Okay. And I created, like I mentioned before, I created this space so that it can be a space for women. You can be vulnerable with us. Mm. You can, yeah, because we are here to to build back yeah. uh, the confidence. Yeah. The, most women get to lose yeah. their confidence, especially I think after childbirth mm -hmm. or after traumas yeah. and everything. Um, when you get to a space that you know it's just not about clothes and that is what I get to put um, to my clients. It's just not about the clothes. Yeah. There's a story behind it. Wow. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there you had your, it. Yeah, share your story with us. There you had it. Well, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, that has been Olga Nato, the CEO and founder of Olga Nato Studio, whose tagline is Shape of You. So that means that it doesn't matter what shape or size you come in. You're welcome. Come to the studio <laughs> and they will have your fashion needs sorted. Remember, it's a holiday season. In case you're looking for outfits for the season, look yeah. no further. Just walk into the studio and all your problems will be. Sorted. sorted. Remember, we said that she has a holiday collection which looks amazing. And at this particular point, we want to jump over and just have a look and a feel of what this collection is. Don't stay away. All right, Nato, so where do we get information about your holiday collection before you show them to us? Where yeah. can we find them? Are they available online or do we have to walk all the way to your studio? So one I said, I'll take you back to COVID. Mm. COVID taught us to push online. Yeah. So a lot of my collection, uh, you can find them online. Um, on um, Instagram, Facebook, and also my website. My website is www.olganata.com. Yeah. IG is Olga. Olga is spelled as <laughs> A-U-L-G-A-H underscore Nato. Yeah, that's IG and then that's Facebook equally on Twitter and yeah, yeah, yeah that's and we are based in Kilimani um, uh, Chania Avenue Chania Court 42 door number 8 <laughs> yes trust me you do not want not to be found here does that make sense <laughs> you need to be found here especially this is the place, to, this be is the place to be during this festive season here we go let's see what this is I'll about. probably show you this. Yeah, um, this, this lady. Yes, listen for me. You can still talk about this one. So, mm -hmm. uh, first I'll talk about my cards. Uh, mm. You see, the cards are pretty chic and uh, yeah. woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And feminine exactly. and, yeah. and girly. And having something that's. You know, because we are in this season, it's hot, it's sunny. Yeah. You need to have a light fabric mm -hmm. that uh, work for you. Okay. You need to have something that goes with the shape of you mm -hmm. yeah do not let uh, dresses that you're getting into a dress that and you pick the shape of no pick, it's the other way around yeah let have the... your shape of okay. your um, on the dress that you're wearing so okay. I'll, I'll take you through about right. this okay again i told you about my fabrics mm -hmm. so this is tribal fabric and uh, you'll see we have like this has a uh, this is the shirt dress mm -hmm. You can yeah. see that lovely. Right, mm -hmm. and, and I have a shirt with it. So during this holiday, again, you feel it that um, it has uh, it's breathing. linen mm. and, uh, and cotton. Mm. So it's breathing. During this season, this is the kind of fabric you need. So this is for her, her. and him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We so when you step out in a very relaxed, this in a white shirt and, and stuff yeah. will go very well. And then this is a um, is very easy top. Okay. And I told you again, it's about the cut for mm. me. You need to zoom and in, it's yeah. branded. It's branded, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very really nice. So yeah. it's it's the cut the, and the fabric. Okay. Uh, you need to wear something clean. There's just a way white brings out uh, the, the detail of a woman very well. Mm. And so to me, the, the cards and this is of the same print and you see again wow. the sleeves and and the cut of this, this this looks like a free size it's a free size yeah so it would fit. and very much you know it it's a holiday look completely nice uh, down at the cost you're doing this or so you choose to visit home i mean this is everything that you want to mm. to wear yeah right yep Okay. Right. Mm. Thank you. Very and what much. I'm wearing? What you're wearing goes as well. So this we can step out for lunch <laughs> right now. After this, let's let's step out for lunch. Uh, okay. You. We 
we have to yeah. go for lunch. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so, girlfriend, any final thoughts? Well, it's been lovely having you in Thank my studio. You. Thank and you. And I would definitely love to reward um, your viewers. Oh my God. Yeah, so we are gifting one of your very, very loyal viewers with one of our ready square. Oh so my God. Uh, you know the process. Oh and my God. Yes. That is so amazing. Yeah, for this Christmas season. I mean, you all, we all need to feel, you know. Aww. Aww. <laughs> well, that's a, an early Merry Christmas for right. someone. Now, what you need to do, if you know someone, we have a gift. If you know someone who deserves to get this giveaway, you know what to do. Talk, drop a comment on any of our social media pages at KTN Home or at Quintambori on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Is there someone you think deserves this giveaway from Organato Studio? Remember, we asked you, what are some of those fashion struggles you're having during this festive season? Talk to us. We are available at KTN Home on Facebook, Twitter, as well as Instagram. Alternatively, you can hit me up at Quintambori also across all social media platforms. Well, without further ado, allow me to say bye. I need to allow you to go back and enjoy your festive season. Happy holiday and see you next time.